Hello everyone, Miss Elizabeth here for First Congregational Church of Muskegon Confirmation Class. For today's video lesson, we're returning to Unit 6, the unit in our curriculum about peace and justice. Our lesson today is about stillness. We're following the Progressive Christianity curriculum that First Congregational Church has purchased, although we do not own the copyright to this material. Our affirmation is, in stillness I experience peace of spirit and know my true self. Taking time to be in stillness is important for physical and mental well-being, and it is absolutely vital if we want an inner experience of spirit. It is not easy to quiet the storms of excitement and learn to be comfortable with stillness. Here's some quotes I want to share. From Greta Vosper, Be still. Slow down. Find the center where I am. It is from this place that I must live, not my head, not even my heart, but here, from these depths where I am. Silence. In this time, amongst these people, may I sit as I truly am, and be in comfort. May I learn to open these depths to others that I might cast light into darkness and wonder into reality, and in turn, be lifted by the beauty and truth they offer me. In Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Hazrat Inyat Khan said, The greatest fault of the day is the absence of stillness. Stillness is nowadays often taken as leisureliness or as slowness. Modern man lacks concentration and carries with him an atmosphere of restlessness. With all his knowledge and progress, he feels uncomfortable himself and unintentionally brings discomfort to others. Stillness is therefore the most important lesson that can be taught to the youth of today. And from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verse 39, he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. The peace pilgrim said, When you find peace within yourself, you become the kind of person who can live at peace with others. And from the Bible, Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. And the writer Drew Gerald said, it is the silence in your own life that contains and gives birth to everything you have and everything you will ever need. It is this same silence we avoid, overlook, and disregard as nothing. The white space of life we abhor. We fill our lives with noise, drama, screens, people, and stuff to avoid the void that reminds us of our truth, that beyond flesh 
that once was not and will inescapably become not, we are eternal. In stillness, I experience peace. Inner stillness is the key to spiritual understanding and growth. Although being still within is a natural state, most people grow accustomed to an unnatural state of restlessness. We learn to look continuously for stimulation from the environment and our active, energetic culture provides little opportunity for stillness. So let's allow ourselves to experience stillness through prayer and meditation. Repeat this prayer out loud or mentally. You may choose to say the prayer several times until you feel still and quiet. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know. Be still. Be. Feel yourself sink into stillness and be aware of your breathing. Finish by repeating that prayer in reverse. Be. Be still. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I am God. The filmmaker Steven Spielberg delivered a commencement speech at Harvard in 2016. Listen to what he said about listening to your own still, small voice. I hope all of you find that sense of mission. Don't turn away from what's painful. Examine it. Challenge it. And the way that you create a better future is by studying the past. So to me, this means we all have to tell our own stories. We have so many stories to tell. Talk to your parents and your grandparents, if you can, and ask them about their stories. And that's why I so often make movies based on real-life events. I look to history because the past is filled with the greatest stories that have ever been told. And again, this is why it's so important to listen to your internal whisper. It's the same one that compelled Abraham Lincoln and Oscar Schindler to make the correct moral choices. In your defining moments, do not let your morals be swayed by convenience or expediency Sticking to your character requires a lot of courage. And to be courageous, you're going to need a lot of support. I hope you hang on to the friendships that you've made. And among your friends, I hope you find someone you want to share your life with. I spoke about the importance of intuition and how there's no greater voice to follow. That is, until you meet the love of your life. Love, support, courage, intuition, all of these things are in your hero's quiver. But still, a hero needs one more thing. A hero needs a villain to vanquish. And you're all in luck. This world is full of monsters. And there's racism, homophobia, 
ethnic hatred, class hatred, there's political hatred, there's religious hatred. Now, I don't have to tell a crowd of Red Sox fans that we are wired for tribalism. But beyond rooting for the home team, tribalism has a much darker side. Instinctively, and maybe even genetically, we divide the world into us and them. So the burning question must be, how do all of us together find the we? How do we do that? There's still so much work to be done, and sometimes I feel the work hasn't even begun. And it's not just anti-Semitism that's surging. Islamophobia is on the rise, too, because there's no difference between anyone who is discriminated against, whether it's the Muslims or the Jews or minorities on the border states or the LGBT community. It is all one big hate. And to me, and I think to all of you, the only answer to more hate is more humanity. We got to repair. We have to replace fear with curiosity. Us and them will find the we by connecting with each other and by believing that we're members of the same tribe, and by feeling empathy for every soul. But make sure this empathy isn't just something that you feel. Make it something you act upon. That means vote, peaceably protest, speak up for those who can't, and speak up for those who may be shouting but aren't being heard. Let your conscious shout as loud as it wants if you're using it in the service of others. Well, he had a lot more to say, and I'll put a link in the description section for this video lesson to the YouTube video of Steven Spielberg's commencement speech entirely for the class of 2016 at Harvard. For those of you joining us in the FCC Youth Virtual Hangout session later today, I can't wait to hear your ideas on how we calm our fears, connect with each other, and practice stillness. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.